reporting today for First Updates Now. I'm Rob Haas, and with me here today is Team 19746, the disruptingly robocephalic brainstem robotics team. They were on the winning alliance at Colorado and the winning alliance at the Texas State Championship, giving them a ticket to Houston. Coming in, they had the world record at 297 points, and they are just blazingly fast. I can't wait to jump into this robot on Behind the Bot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-paced camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Get your off-season event an additional 25 to 100 percent more viewership by streaming it on Fun. We'll donate our Twitch or YouTube channel and help promote your event. Contact admin at firstupdatesnow.com to reserve your off-season date. All right, guys, let's get started with your lift. You know, you guys are just going up and down, up and down the entire match, so smooth the entire time. So walk me through how it works, what you've done, anything, any changes you've made throughout the season to make it really smooth. All right, so basically what our lift is, it's a four-motor setup, actually. So uh, we have we have four drive uh, four lift motors for our lift uh, one two three and four. So uh, all of our, all four of our motors uh, they are a 5.2 uh, to one gear ratio and uh, 1150 RPM and that was our first iteration actually 1150 RPM and uh, uh, so basically uh, that so that's, that's our second iteration it's actually uh, 731 RPM so we geared up uh, our RPM because we want more torque and uh, with more torque it pulls less power and uh, it just goes up faster since we also removed the stage so uh, yeah yeah and so like you know you guys said it pulls less power so with four motors what was the reason behind running four motors Right. Yeah. So um, initially, uh, we, we wanted to go with Vipers because uh, you know it's a lot simpler, it's a lot easy, and they're very thin, so it's very easy for packaging in a very small space compared to like Mizumi's or something. And, and since they're heavy, we need a lot of firepower, for example, uh, lots of power torque. So that's why we decided to go with four motors instead of uh, the counter spring solution because we, we don't have space for counter spring actually. Mm -hmm. So we just decided to uh, go with yeah. four motors. Yeah. And so you've had the whole season to reflect on this design. Going back, if you could do it again, would you? stick with this or would you prefer to go for Misumi's or something else? Uh, I think in the future I think we would go for Mizumi's or MGN's um, mainly because uh, these are way too heavy and there's room for optimization, uh, definitely room to speed up the lift uh, because four motors uh, we, we get close to like, getting to the amp limit so yeah. we really want to uh, lower that in the future. Sure and so from a programming perspective how do you control all four motors? Is there anything special you have to do? How does the encoder reading work with all four of those walk me through that? Yeah so uh, for our programming uh, we actually have one external lift encoder. It's actually a rev uh, through bore encoder. Uh, we don't use any of the motor encoders because uh, a we, we don't want any of the motors to fight over one another. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so that's why we have an external encoder. So it doesn't they say they don't fight over another, and it's also a lot more accurate. Mm -hmm. So with that external encoder. Uh, uh, we just we have our custom own we have our custom PID which just sets power to all four motors and then uh, they just run it until the encoder meets its position. Sure. And you know now moving on to your arm, let's talk about that. How has it changed throughout the season? And give me an overview of how it works. All right. So uh, our arm initially of the season, uh, it was also direct drive like this. However, uh, it was it went from uh, it went from it went from parallel to uh, all to the uh, opposite parallel. So it was 180 degrees of travel, and uh, we we. Changed Change that, uh, uh, and uh, so our next iteration, uh, it was actually a chain-driven uh, virtual four bar, to, so we don't get you know servo damage uh, with the shock loads. Uh, but we knew like because of the, since the chain can slip, we decided to switch back to direct drive, and we added hard stops at the end of um, of our virtual four bar, so we can power off our servos and prevent servo damage. Yeah, cool. And so from a programming perspective, if you're using two servos, is there anything special you guys are doing, or is it just pretty simple stuff? Walk us through. That. Yeah, so uh, whenever we, we mechanic, so uh, what we did before we connected the two sides together is that we, we tried to sync them up as close as possible uh, using our, uh, our a tuner, a tuning program. And after we synced them up together, we just, uh, met, we just uh, got their positions and then we just uh, connected, uh, we just connected uh, the two sides together and then it's, uh, we just started connecting and it started working. Okay, cool. And now going on to your claw, walk me through it. How does it work and if you've had any like major upgrades to it throughout the season? Yeah, so uh, our current claw, it's it's uh, it's powered by an Axon Max, and uh, it, the way the power is transferred is with gears. So uh, one servo controls the whole claw, 
And uh, the way it has iterated over the season is that at the beginning, it was actually linkage driven compared to gear driven. Uh, but it was too big because we switched to uh, two, two go build the servos. And then after some you know, further optimization, we switched got to one axe on max. Yeah, and so when you had two go build the servos, was it the same just mechanically linking them through the gears? Or did you do anything different uh, to make sure they were synced? Yeah, so uh, we, we mechanically linked them. We, uh, we just had a tuner which just, uh, which sure. just got them both in positions. It's, oh, so they weren't gear connected with gears or anything no, like that? Okay. No, by, by gear, I mean like the, 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 claw, like the actual claw grabbers connected to the servo. Okay. Okay, gear. okay. Like got your it. power transmission. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I think definitely the most impressive part of your robot in my eyes is your guys' sensor use and how you're able to achieve such consistent autos. So I had the opportunity to watch a control award video a few weeks ago when you were submitting for Texas States and I saw you guys have a five uh, color sensor array in order to make sure you're centered on the field tile, is that correct? Yep, we do. Yeah, so can you walk us through that? It's just so, so incredible. Oh uh, yeah, so uh, for our five color sensor array, uh, can you flip, you can flip, flip show the back. Yeah. So for uh, the reason we uh, went with five color sensor array is that uh, we knew uh, the most accurate way to, uh, to prevent cone stack penalties is by looking at the tape since that's what decides the penalties. So the reason we chose five is that uh, since three of them cover the whole tape, we can use the outer two to like see if we're on the tape or not. So overall, just makes it more accurate, and uh, we can like correct you with the resolution of like five millimeters mm -hmm. uh, with our colors with our color sensors. Yeah. And so have you had any? difficulties with that or are there any like software tricks you had to implement to make sure you're reading them all properly uh, you know walk us through how you implemented that in software yeah so initially what we did was that uh, we, we we tuned uh, we we tested each color sensor individually to see uh, to see its uh, values uh, on the red the blue and the gray tape we uh, tested it all individually and then we like uh, we like uh, made sure they're all the same and then after that we implemented our own custom algorithm to see if we're on the blue tape yeah blue no that's, tape. that's fantastic and since Texas States I have to ask have you guys also checked the color of the tape because I know at Texas States you guys had that match where you got pushed over to the other side and then you centered right on that red tape if you guys were playing blue and picked up all the cones off of there so is that changed for Houston or not really needed to so uh, the, so we not changed uh, we not check, check uh, we not changed to see if we sense the color tape uh, actually there were two bugs at Texas States which prevented us uh, which actually it would cause that to happen so it was actually a some bugs in our autonomous fail safes. Okay. Uh, so that's why we just went to the over to the other side. Yeah. And so I guess my last question for you guys is just from a general strategy perspective. How do you guys approach a match? You know, deciding what you're going to do in it and where you're going to place your codes, go for the circuit or not, things like that. Yeah. So the first thing we do is we also look at our opponents. So we're going a very if we're going at a high, a high, a powerful opponent like a, like a Peppers or Kooky Bots, you know, for example, uh, we can see like what side type strategy to do with them, which is like to you know get over ownership, uh, make sure you outcycle them, or it's like make sure to take the late game ownership. But if we're going against like teams who really aren't as powerful or uh, really don't, we still go for spreading as we want to like uh, maximize that. ownership. Yeah, yeah. Max, yeah, of course. All right, Team 19, 746, thank you guys so much. You know, this being your first season has just been absolutely incredible. You guys are so, so good and, you know, making it to the Houston Championship and performing at such a high level as you guys have this entire season is incredibly impressive. So thank you so much. Reporting for First Updates now, I'm Abhas, and this is Team 19746, the disruptingly robocephalic brainstem robotics team. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.